Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I'm gonna talk about Apex Off Grid and um, this is small suite of plugins I developed to make your apps Apex apps offline capable. And um, my focus on this is for it to be as easy or pretty easy to integrate, so you don't need to uh, write any custom code and sync lots of JavaScript in your pages. Instead, I offer a low-code API with plugins. And um, also a few design considerations I did was I um, set this to be offline first. So um, if you are in the offline app and you have an active Intel connection, or the user data will still access the offline store. There is no like checks if we are currently online then go directly to the database and only if we are offline go to the user storage the offline storage um, i chose this approach because it's consistent and uh, is uh, it saves me from a lot of headaches like for example also there are problems with you have a slow connection but you're online but you have a slow unreliable connection then the offline storage will still be used and your app is super fast. And um, I also used SQLite as an offline storage. And um, you may have heard about, um, for example, IndexedDB or local storage. These two are more commonly used browser storage solutions and um, they, they are also included in the browsers. Um, I went with SQLite, it's um, a very heavily used database, also capable of SQL. And um, it now has a browser built where we can run it in the web with WebAssembly. That means that it, it is not um, actually um, included in the browser, so we load it on the page. But um, in the end, we have a full capable SQL, SQL API to query our data. We can also use check constraints, foreign keys, and create uh, tables or mirror tables from Oracle. It's super fast, it's super reliable, it's asset compliant, and uh, that's why I chose this one over, for example, IndexedDB. Um, it's a little bit bleeding edge, unfortunately, so I think the build came out at the end of last year or at the start of this year. And uh, currently, for example, this does not work for Safari, but it's not like a, a, a Safari does not, it's a Safari bug currently because it has worked before and I also downloaded the Safari beta release and um, that works again. So um, yeah, it's a little bit bleeding edge. I also um, provide an API to synchronize your data. So if you, if you start the app, that data will be downloaded to the client and uh, next time you have changes, they will be synced to the server and also other changes from the server will be synced to your client, etc. And we, I also let you hook into the um, in this code to to do um, to merge conflicts or detect merge conflicts. For example, if two users are both offline and edit the same record, you can then um, yeah the system does not just overwrite each other. You can define your logic and then do a manual merge so both changes will be represented in the database on a later point. And um, yeah, a few considerations. Um, it's not a plugin system that you can just, you have your existing app and you just uh, flick a switch or something and your app is now offline capable. It's like you build a new application with this in mind. So many um, features that are normally used in Apex are not supported. For example, classic reports, interactive reports or interactive grids because of my plugin approach and I, I didn't want to to hook too much into Apex native things like uh, the interactive grid for example has a JavaScript API but it's not that well documented because it's more for internal use of the Apex developers and I didn't want to spend too much time like hacking around with this so I just went with my own um, plugins for example I can um, fill forms or save forms for example and i have an ag grid component that's uh, an excel light component i will show that soon um but yeah keep in mind that many stuff that's normal to apex like ch charts or a 
reports are not offline capable with this stuff, only specific functionalities. And also there's currently, unfortunately, a bug in Apex. Um, I need to set two headers to get SQLite to work. And uh, these headers, um, uh, or uh, in the Apex uh, shared components, you, you are able to set headers for your app. But unfortunately, these don't apply to to plugin files. So this does not work for me. And I was um, Christian Neumüller from the Apex team confirmed on Twitter that this is indeed a bug. And um, so, yeah, I think um, it will be fixed someday. But currently you can't, for, ex for this reason, run my example app on apex.oracle.com. You need an environment where you have control over the HTTP headers or, for example, RDS or the web server or a proxy where you can then say, please send these headers with the every response. And um, yeah, as I said before, it does not work with the current Safari version, but the previous and next, so it's it's a bug in Safari. And that's unfortunate. unfortunate. Um, also, this point, keep that in mind, this is a proof of concept uh, thing. I did this for demos and uh, conference talks. Uh, I don't have used this in any production environment. So it, there is no, not much testing uh, happen to this so play around with it but i don't recommend that you um, do important apps with that also it's a free open source source thing i'm doing in my free time um, i can't give any support like in a reliable way you can still um, do uh, create issues on github and i will take a look at it maybe but i i can tell if I'm going to fix anything because I would do that in my free time and yeah, it's limited. If you need something that's better supported, you can um, contact me or my employer directly at apex.mt-itsolutions.com and we can then commercially support something. We also have other, other approaches where we do offline Apex and there we can guarantee you that, that it's working. But this, this suit of plugins here that's what i did and here i i only do free support for example and yeah if there are issues um don't uh, expect them to be fixed um anytime or immediately i don't know so yeah that's for the int uh, for the introduction um so let's actually do something first off you can go on uh, github and um here on Apex off grid, I have this um, open sourced on GitHub. Um, you will find on the releases page here, I will do a, a new release after recording this video, 0 0.2, and there will be a zip with a, a downloader of, of the files. And um, here I have prepared it already, and there are a lot of, fa of files in here, and um, First off is um, some sample data. Um, so some tables, for example, you can install these by um, uh, going to the SQL workshop, or upload the script or even SQL commands. But uh, I like to do it with SQL developer. So just paste everything in here and um, execute it in your schema or even SQL CL. You're free to use your favorite tool. And um, yeah, so, so sample data, there's a sync table where all the changes are stored. Um, I have six packages you also need to install. And the fourth folder here is application specific stuff, plugins and the service worker. And that we will do now. So I, I already installed all the database uh, requirements in the schema. And let's create a new app. So um, as you can see here, there's already a failed uh, recording happened here. So let's do another one. Um, Apex of grid demo 0.2. Um, let's do a higher number and create empty application shell for now. And in here we go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is go to uh, static application files 
and create file and I'm going to drag and drop the service worker create and here on the left side we can then copy let me make it bigger the reference and we can go back shared components application definition progressive web app um, enable progressive web app make it installable and um, file URL here, we can now paste our custom service worker. Um, this service worker will cache additional resources to make the app work offline. Um, great, apply changes. And um, I keep the other settings. Also, I recommend uh, you enable persistent authentication where you um, don't need to log in every time so it rejoins your session and stuff that's also really useful for progressive web apps but um, it's not necessary so I, I, I'm going to skip that in the tutorial here okay um, so the thing with the headers is um, normally we can go here to security attributes scroll a bit and here in the browser security section there is in section HTTP response headers we would need to put these two. I'm gonna also put put these in the description, also the link to the GitHub. And um, unfortunately, yeah, I can do that, but it won't work, at least not on apex.oracle.com. Um, and so I did it somewhere in my proxy on my server, but it's like, um, there's not a golden way to do it. It's dependent on your infrastructure. So I'm not going to show it. You have to figure that out for yourself, unfortunately. And yeah, the next stuff is we go to plugins and we're going to import each plugin here. And um, I'm going to fast forward this. So um, I now imported all the five plugins, great. So we can now go to page one and uh, we can also execute the app. I'm gonna log in, it's, uh, password. And it's of, of course uh, it's still empty here, but uh, what we're gonna do now is create a direct action on play page load. And I'm calling that sync data. And um, as an action, I'm going to use uh, sync offline data, one of the plugins. And um, this has a few settings. So first one is uh, mode. And um, I'm going to talk about the other ones or we now need the default one, define storage. And um, what we are gonna do here is paste a query of the data we want to have offline available. So, um, just gonna paste this query. So I have an offline people table. I named it offline people, but it's just a, a, a table that stores some per people information. And uh, the interesting part here is also I have this last change column. So it's a, a date in Oracle, but um, I'm going to transform it to a Unix timestamp like or milliseconds since and the first January of 1970 because that, that's how JavaScript stores dates and how my plugin can handle these dates. Um, yeah, so put that in here, Unix storage ID. So we can give this storage an identifier. So we can, uh, with that, we can um, um, reference it and, you, and consume the data later. And we also can say our primary keys ID, the last change column is named last changed. Here we can define, um, so so if you have a huge table with uh, thousands of rows, that's no problem for my plugin, but um, we are not going to, to fetch them at once because it's a huge, too huge of a payload. So we, you can define here how many rows should be fetched per request um, and then it will fetch um, do mul multiple fetches to check all the data. So I'm going to keep it at 500. Also sync timeout. So this demo action runs on page load, but we don't want to uh, do a sync 
like every time the user reloads that can be um much times and we don't want to to put that heavy load on the server all the time so a sync can you will send lots of data so i don't want to put that amount of pressure on the server so um, i said here okay really only do a fetch every 60 minutes or a sync and um yeah we have that set up and if we then go into the app I'm going to open the console and i'm also going to enable debug and um, we can see there was actually some synchronization happening in the background really fast and it says sync done for offline people v1 great and so we can actually look at the data we downloaded by you can install a plugin for chrome it's called uh, opfs explorer here the first one and you can just add that to chrome and um, if you have that you can then go in the um, developer tools here to the tab opfs explorer and here we get the this sqlite file we can click on it to download it and we get the sqlite database downloaded to our computer and here we can actually open it with any um, sqlite uh, viewer tool i use a beekeeper studio and here we can see what's stored in there and um, here we have uh, our offline people storage and we can actually see all the rows we downloaded from oracle to this offline storage here so it's i think it's uh, 2500 rows or something so yeah so we have some meta table with some basic info server ids is something whereas there are um, region specific configurations and uh, region stores uh, so with that and this is a temporary table uh, during synchronization to keep track of all the ids okay so that's just a small look into how i store the data so it's nothing of your concern actually um or nothing you need to worry about uh, at least when it works and um, so i'm going to close that again and so we have the data not downloaded but we actually want to see that so i'm going to go back to the page designer body create a region and here we use the first one ag grid offline plugin and what we do here now is we copy the query and paste that also into here. But as I said before, this I use an offline first approach. So putting the query in here actually does not load any data. Instead, it uh, defines the column configuration here. So it's like in the integrative grid, we can configure something. I want to don't want to see these rows. I want to do last and first name for the first rows maybe and uh, okay i need to still put attributes in here we need to define the primary key and additional settings so here i am going to define or reference the offline storage so offline people and storage version one and so if we reload this we actually get our um, data in the script and we could edge it but we haven't still I have no save button so um, great so this is actually offline um, the data is loaded from the offline storage I can actually show you that um, okay why it's loading so slow um, Okay, I don't know what, what, what this was, but um, here in the Chrome tools, we have this network tab and here I can click on no throttling and say simulate that it's offline. So it's the same as, as if I would uh, plug out my internet cable or something. And now the website can't communicate with anything and I can still reload the page and actually get the data. So this is this page is now offline capable 
and yeah it's all the magic is in the plugins and the service worker so um you don't need to worry about anything um okay i'm going to go back online again because uh, i want to change the page let's first rename that region to a grid because we need to reference it later and i create a button here in the copy name it save and we can create a dummy action here save grid data and as an action we i have to save ag grid data uh, da and here we need to reference the ag grid region and voila here we have a save button now and let's go um, offline again. And for example, here Peggy123, I change the data, save, changes are saved. And if I reload, it now refetches the data from our offline storage and actually we see that we have um, Peggy stored in our database. I can also um, delete uh, Gervin and also can maybe duplicate uh, Dave. Dave new row and save again reload so Gervin Noel should be gone. Yeah, Gavin Dave is still there but not Gavin Noel. And if I scroll down, so the new inserted record because of the default sorting now should be at the bottom. Yeah, here's Dave, um, new row, great. Um, yeah, so we have that um, offline saving. Mm -hmm. Great. So I go online again and what I'm gonna do is uh, I get an error. Okay, yeah, I get an error. I don't, I know why. And um, so the thing we now need to do is um, it already wants to synchronize the data. Um, so um, we gonna need to provide a functionality to do that. So first off, I'm going to, before we do that, I'm going to quickly create a new page in here. And blank page, uh, it's 1000 um, data changes. And this is now not an offline page, it's a general information page. And I'm going to quickly copy a page over there or um, copy to other, uh, can I actually, how can I, can I copy that to the other, another app? I think I need to actually uh, recreate that. Um, don't want to export, can I, I can actually export the, to the page, so. Um, export here, is it? Voila, and in here, import. It's from another app. Oh. <laughs> it's a, okay, I'm just gonna help. Uh, recreate that page. Um, it's not that complicated. Mm. Interactive report, SQL, and uh, okay, so success, we do that on the f first and we need to um 
allow HTML escape. So yeah, these are our changes we wanted to synchronize to our server. And um, it currently crashes all the time. And how to fix that? We go to our um, SQL workshop and here we have a package and it's offline data sync API. And we have this procedure sync row. And uh, that procedure, um, sorry, scroll too quickly, receives a row and uh, of, of the table data sync. That's the table that draws all the changes. And here we ha have a sample case. And um, here um, um, you can hook in and get the storage ID you defined. So here I have uh, on page one, I have said that my storage is named offline people. Yeah, I changed the example name so it failed here. And so I put the correct name in here and storage version is one. So here's also version one. And then you need to write your own procedure. So I did an example here, process people v1 um, that returns if there is a success. And uh, you can then get so the changes are stored in a JSON format. So this table is generic and can store all kind of data structures or yeah, table columns, for example. Um, and you can extract everything from this JSON and then you have a change type. So it's insert, update or delete here. And then you can do your logic to insert into into uh, the table. And for example, uh, for the update part, you have to be careful. So here there can be concurrent changing, concurring changes. So two users updated the same row and um, you don't want to overwrite the changes from the first updater because both downloaded the old stand of the rows and um, do their edits not based on each other state. So you would overwrite um, each other's changes. So that's why I have this last change column. So we query the last change column from the database. And if it is not the same, I'm just going to say it's not successful. We cannot automatically insert this or update this we return. Otherwise, we just execute the update. And then we need to manually um, do a merge later. And um, otherwise, when it's a delete, we just, um, we also check if it was changed. So I, I, for this ca case, I thought, yeah, okay, if, if one user is offline and updates a row and another one is also offline and wants to delete this row, you want to maybe also figure out why that one user wants to delete it where the other one still updates it. So I also say it's not possible to do this. And otherwise, um, we do the update and the delete. And this is why I can't, you need to write your own um, code because you might want to do stuff differently in here. And um, so you can do anything you want in here. You can also use your logging APIs or your, um, your, your um, table APIs or transaction APIs. So um, that's your part, but um, that's for this example, this is how we handle it. And um, yeah, so in this case, you can also add, if you have another version of it or you have other storages, you can ju just extend the case here. Um, but yeah, um, you shouldn't touch the rest of this. So you can hook into here and write your procedures or, yeah. I compile this, great. And if I now, uh, just now synchronizing again, maybe we get, yeah, now we get actually successful. So we actually now 
deleted. Which one did we delete? We deleted uh, Gervin Well. So the, what's the email? No, Noel Gervin. So we should not be able to find that in here. Um, yeah. And also Peggy1234. So we could take a look at the table. Offline people, we should uh, query. Uh, f is, it, is it last name? First name? Uh, oh, I, th I think I need to check that. Okay. No data. From oh, God. I don't know how to use this interface. Um, let's go. Select star from offline people. Where first name equals, and we we actually you can actually see yeah we we synchronized that change and it now is now updated in the database so that that's working great um yeah good and yeah. So um, I think this uh, this grid here is cool to do changes like on a computer. We can also copy, paste and stuff. It's also a different plugin I developed. You can take a look at that too. It's, it is also a normal online version. Um, but I think it's not really usable on a mobile phone. So I also um, went with uh, a form integration. So um, let's create a new page, blank page, page two form. And here we can um, first let me copy again that storage name. Here we can, we have to again say create a dynamic action in it offline storage so because this is a different page we we need to run again our synchronization plugin and we can oh no that's not that we can then here we don't need to do define storage we have to define it on the first page we can then uh, load existing storage and then we only need to give offline people and storage version one and now in its story result is good great and now we can um, here use the data so I'm gonna create a region and this is it of the type offline data list in here um, data list and here we can again reference storage ID and we have to use to do a JavaScript function here so we can um, define um, how we want the the, um, the the thing to look. So let me quickly, or what it shows. Let me quickly copy that from from uh, another app. Um, forgot the JavaScript code. Here I have it. So it's just a small string concatenation and I'm just going to return first name and last name and this is the same as um, the column names from the query and uh, save and let's check so here we can then just get a list of uh, the data we can paginate go to the last page and we can also do searches um, uh, it's not searching for the displayed value. I think he has a salary where something like one, two, three is in there. So it's a full row search. Um, great stuff. Okay. And let's go back here. We can do a page item here. Selected ID. Type hidden. Or we can actually do display only for for this demo purpose, and we can here set fill item with ID on selection, selected ID, 
and here you can see if I click on something the value here gets selected. And this is now interesting if we do a form here and um, so let's create a new region and of the type form and we again put a query in here but not to fetch any data instead to to let us uh, let it generate all the columns here uh, all the page items and we actually need to delete this in a initialize form um, process because we want to use our offline storage and we can customize these hidden hidden and yeah we now have a cool form and it does nothing but we can create a direction here on um, change of the ID so if we click on any record we're going to change this ID and then it will trigger this um, this semi action selection we can then use offline form utils then we say fill we again say storage is uh, not that one storage is that one we have to say what's the primary key item it's actually the selected ID so we know which which row to fetch and um, if we select now a record we actually fill this form here great and um, buttons I can then go ahead and create a text button change save mm. again create a demo action save form again use the um, offline form utils here we have save I also have double update I don't know why I did it two times but it doesn't matter which you choose and I can again paste my storage ID again use my primary key item so now use the real one I didn't actually need to to create this separated uh, separate item here but uh, yeah I could just you created this one at first hand and then fill this item but I just keep it for now um yeah so I have this save thingy I go again onto the app and my server seems to be really slow so um, let's go offline again reload the page and yeah it still loads great I can um, get Dave and Dave um, change change his name record updated successfully reload the page and we see that we have actually also updated Dave in our offline store great stuff and um, yeah you can also um, use delete to delete a row you can insert to insert a new one and um, you can also clear this form uh, this is useful for um, if you if you put a, a add new item a button here then you click on it then it's gonna clear the form so you have uh, empty fields in here and then you can insert a new one uh, but I'm not going to show that it is it would take some time uh, let's quickly go back to the sync offline data plugin here and um, so what we can also do is load and sync existing storage so this is the same but we also can try a synchronization step 
um, on on the um, so when the page loads it, it also tries to synchronize the data currently this does not do this on that page only on the other page um, uh, oh god my session will be killed soon um, we can also do a for sync this only works if you have your storage already set up then you can do add a button and um, then force a synchronization without the so you have this uh, timeout setting here and it will bypass that and um, so um, another thing I didn't told you was um, versioning I ran over that um, so you are not allowed to, to modify this query here because um, yeah, as I showed you, there's a table being created on the client and I currently do not support changes to the query. And I, I, I not currently, I won't do that because it's too complicated. Instead, when you do need to change the query, you first say, this one is now deprecated. Um, this will just mean it tells the user, okay, if you have any changes you haven't yet uh, synced like for example you do this when users are offline and they only go online like in the next week they see it's now deprecated they will send their local made changes to the server still and then delete their storage and um, so then you can also so you wanted to change the query here you would set this one to deprecate the old one and then you can duplicate that and say, okay, this is now version two, and you can add another column um, like this. And uh, yeah, so if I would no go here, I'm offline. This does not work. Changing the page while being offline, <laughs> um, or like me as a developer because I I send a request to that thing so um, your offline users won't be won't have any problems only you as a developer when you're developing you need to be online mm. so I now created a new storage and if I download the database file again replace um, I now get offline people v2 and I okay I haven't set this one to deprecated but I can quickly also show you that so deprecated and um, yeah okay this does not load <laughs> of course I, I, I delete the storage um, so um, now it should be deleted actually is it deleted and yeah okay it is deleted uh, I think uh, the I was worried because the the file does not ch the size does not, not change, but I think it will vacuum like I I set it set the database to vacuum every now and then, and then it will also reduce the uh, now freed up size of the database, and also the file will be smaller again. Yeah, um, I will provide a demo application, not this one as it's not as pretty i think um, oh, my session is over just in time session ending <laughs> and um, i will provide this yeah i have a new session application i think it's a little bit more beautiful and uh, i will yeah okay it's now work working and here it has everything also but for example here we can also uh, I have this implementation of creating new one I can delete things so you can have a look at that logic um, f feel free to download this app and uh, play around with it but again remember you have to have to uh, set the HTTPS headers and yeah please really Remember, it's a proof of concept state. This is not supported. So if you have problems, you are on your own or you can create a GitHub issue. I may look into it, but don't take this for granted. And um, yeah, 
so this is only currently what supported the form and the grid stuff i may do extend this but um i have some things planned out but let's see i will keep you updated um so this is now a very long video i guess um thanks for for tuning in and watching this um, if you have any feedback, any questions, please put them in the comments. If you have found any bugs, please post them on GitHub, not in the YouTube comments. And um, feel free to also contribute. Uh, look at the code at GitHub. Uh, optimize the code. Um, it's spaghetti code mostly, unfortunately. <laughs> and um, yeah, I hope you like this and think it's useful. Um, and... See you soon or hear you soon. Have a nice day. Bye.